4% allowable growth. Uh, uh, we passed standards last year. Core curriculum is about teaching students and, uh, and for the world of work. And I have more uh, small schools in my district than any other senator here. And many of them have talked to me, just tell us what we need to do. And the goal here is that uh, our educators and boards and teachers and parents and we visit with business and industry in our communities and, and try to get everybody on the same page and, and teach these young people so that they'll go into this uh, you know, in skilled, we got the biggest shortage of skilled labor that we've ever had, and so uh, this is all going to uh, help us to get in the right direction. And so these people, hopefully, we can keep them in Iowa and get them a good job. Uh, let me talk about a couple things. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come back to the, um, to the smoking bill that we intend on taking up next week as well, assuming we can reach a consensus on it. Uh, but let me start by saying I, I went to an um, AEA meeting this morning. The AEAs were in room 116 this morning. And there were a few Republicans there that were talking about uh, some of the governor's comments yesterday on silo, where the governor said to somebody that, he, uh, that, that it would be possible to use the silo money uh, for, for teacher pay. Uh, Republicans, some Republicans I saw down there were jumping on that as an excuse um, to, to be against this bill now. Um, I, I've heard this coming from Republicans repeatedly, that it's possible that some of this infrastructure money uh, could be diverted to other sources. I, I, I got to tell you that, that that excuse is just an excuse. If Republicans don't want to do what's right for the students in their districts out there, um, I, I think they should just come out and say they don't want to do it. This business of somehow diverting that money sounds an awful lot to me like my dog ate my homework as an excuse, and I'm kind of getting tired of it from the Republicans. If they want to pull the plug on doing something in a bipartisan way on silo, we've made it abundantly clear to them that we will work with them, we will work with them to provide reassurance that that money will stay to be used for property tax relief and for um, the school infrastructure. I gotta tell you, I feel very strongly on that. We've got, uh, we've still got portable classrooms at Gun Elementary School Council Bluffs that were put there in the 60s temporary affordable classrooms. They've been there since 1964. Um, we're going we're gonna to work and we're going to try and get that done. But I am really tired of excuses coming from the public. Um, on, the, on the smoking ban, uh, we had some discussion on it in caucus this morning. Uh, we are working on developing a consensus on that. Um, I'm confident that bill will come out of committee, uh, come out of subcommittee today, come out of full committee, state government committee next, um, next Monday. And it is likely we will debate it probably on Wednesday, but I'm not positive yet. Um, so we'll probably be an extended caucus to talk about um, various elements of that. But, uh, but we're going to push that. So Kibbe and I both feel pretty strong that this is an issue that's about, um, but, you know, a lot of people make a lot of, a lot of kind of crazy arguments about this, this issue as well. This is about protecting workers. This is about some of the employees I see. Uh, most of you know one of my favorite hangouts in Des Moines. Um, out on Ingersoll, and I see waitresses there, young women, pregnant, that don't like working in a place where they're exposed to lots of smoke. This is about protecting workers in the state. It's not about it's not about the state dictating personal choices. It's about the state, just as we do in a host of other ways, making sure the workers on the job are protected. And we're gonna we're gonna fight as hard as we can to get the strongest position. The House did great work on this. Uh, last week, and we're also going to stay in contact with them about any changes that we might make with those, making sure that we're going to be able to have a bill that in the end passes the Senate, passes the House, and gets signed by the governor. And I uh, welcome the House. Glad to be here. We, uh, the uh, elections uh, bill that we were debating this morning, we did defer on that bill. Um, uh, there was many questions about the bill, so we're going to defer on it for further work. Um, in a bipartisan way to see if we can uh, bring the ethics bill back before the House, but uh, uh, it's pretty clear that from both caucuses that we needed to do further work on that bill. Um, 
we did have an exciting week uh, this week with our smoking debate. Uh, we look forward to continuing to work with the Senate uh, to find a compromise, as Senator Gostel said. Uh, I do, uh, I think it's appropriate every now and then for at least a little bit of levity, uh, have a brief statement about the debate. Good. <laughs> good, go ahead. But my statement is that, that some of the arguments that the Republicans made on the uh, smoking bill uh, did uh, make many of us fume. Um, uh, some of the arguments, I think, made them the butt of uh, many jokes. Uh, in the end, most of the arguments went up in smoke. Um, a lot of their arguments really amounted to nothing more than smoke and mirrors, uh, although I do admit I missed part of the debate, so I heard a lot of that uh, secondhand. Um, Don't give up the day job. Keep the day job. Um, just real quickly, um, the only thing I'll add is uh, I, next week in the House we'll be debating the uh, lottery bill that would um, take a new ticket that would be sold by the Iowa Lottery. Uh, and the proceeds from that would be used for uh, putting the Veterans Trust Fund. Uh, right now, uh, it's estimated that it would cost the, it'd be minimal impact to the uh, state treasury uh, if we create a new ticket, and they're estimating that this will generate two to three million dollars a year. So for the first time, the Veterans Trust Fund would have a dedicated funding source, and we're expecting to debate that bill uh, sometime next week. So that's one of the things we'll have coming up. There might be a couple other bills that'll be ready as well, but, um, uh, we may try to do the rebate bill next week. It just depends on whether or not um, we can logistically get that done, um, uh, that we can get that done and debated by this time next week. And I'd like any of you to address this, if you would. Um, twice this week, uh, the governor has arranged for some of his core supporters to come up to point, draw attention to a couple of bills that are in trouble up here. He had uh, the Sierra Club, the DNR, talk about the bottle bill. Today, he had some church groups in to talk about uh, combined reporting. Does that make a difference up here? Um, well, at, the, at, at this point, I mean, we release budget targets without those things in the bill. Um, and I think that we're going to probably try to proceed with uh, being fiscally responsible, balancing the budget, and it, it probably won't include those two things. Um, so I, we're going to continue to work in the direction we've, we've set. We appreciate the fact the governor presented a budget and that he, um, he put some new things for discussion on the table. But uh, at this point, I just think... Um, uh, it, it'll be difficult for us to be able to pass those. Mike, same. I, 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 still I'd, pretty you much, I'd pretty much give the same answer. I do commend the governor for looking for ways uh, to make sure our tax system's fair and, and some of the concerns about combined reporting corporations, those are legitimate concerns. Uh, we're probably not going to proceed with that legislation, but, uh, but the idea to make sure that people pay their fair share of taxes is, is something that uh, is something that deserves to be on our agenda. Same thing with the bottle bill. We're looking at um, a lot of ways to try and make this state a greener state. Uh, I think we're all very interested in that. We're, uh, and, and the bottle bill was one mechanism. I commend him for putting that on the table. Um, and as I've said before, this is an issue that has vexed the legislature. Um, the census has eluded us. Uh, there, uh, but there, is, there, there continues to be real concern about uh, about the bottle bill, but there continues to be a lack of consensus on how to solve that. So this is about lack of consensus and not being pressured by outside groups? I think, I think my comments last week were, were very, very clear about, um, uh, uh, we're, we're very interested in those issues, and I, and, and I, I spoke to the grocers last week. I commended the government for, for um, making recommendations in this area. These are important issues. Iowans want to see us do a better job of recycling and reducing the amount of stuff that goes into the waste stream in the state. So we're going to look at um, as many ways as possible. We've looked at that. There, are, We still have people talking about the bottle, but we're going to continue to do that. And we're going to continue to work constructively with the governor. We've had good meetings with the governor uh, this week and last week, and um, we're, going to, we're going to try and, <coughs> try and move the state forward on those environmental issues. Did the governor make a mistake or misspeak by opening up that that silo discussion giving. No, no, I don't think the governor. I don't think the governor made any mistake whatsoever. I think a bunch of Republicans look for an opportunity to jump on something and have an excuse. They've been looking for an excuse the whole session, and, and uh, I, I don't think you can. I don't think there's much you can do about that as a public official. The governor was asked by a citizen, "Is it possible you could use some of the silo money for teacher pay?" And uh, I would say, along with everybody else up here, yes, it is possible. 
Is that the intent? Did the governor recommend it? Did he endorse the concept? No, he did. Republicans you tried to put tried to put those words in his mouth. But the soundbite was that he thought that might be a legitimate use of the money, not just oh, it's technically possible. I mean, uh, shouldn't your anger be? I mean, Roger no, Wendt was no. angry. There were House members angry at the governor for doing exactly what they've been saying won't be done. And and 